everyone, and welcome to episode number 35 of the Karen Knits podcast. My name is Karen, and I'm coming to you today from South Central Pennsylvania, where I live, where I work, where I knit, and where I get into all kinds of other crafty shenanigans. Today is Saturday, October the 10th, 2020, and we got a really overcast day today, so it's kind of a little bit darkish out. It's late in the afternoon already. I was busy earlier in today and didn't get a chance to get the podcast going until a lot later in the day, but hey, so be it. So if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for checking me out. I hope you enjoy it here. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to see me again for another week to see what I've see what I've been up to this past week or so. If you haven't already I would love it if you would subscribe to my itty bitty channel. It would mean the world to me. And also, if you enjoyed this, I'd be happy if you'd like this video. Share it with someone if you feel for it. And what else? <laughs> this is awkward begging for awkward begging for love. <laughs> so, so today, today I'm drinking a cup of tea that a friend of mine from church gave me. It is Lipton Green Tea Orange Passion Fruit and Jasmine. And it's really good. It's a really, really nice tea. Jasmine is typically not one of my favorite flavors. To me, it almost tastes like I'm drinking flowers. <laughs> No offense to anyone that likes that likes jasmine tea, but it's not my favorite. I don't really like the really flowery tasting teas, but this is really, really nice. Um, orange passion fruit and jasmine green tea. I'm, I really like it. So I've had drink a few cups out of the, the box of tea bags already, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's really yummy. So that's about it for administrative stuff. I have a few things I want to talk about today in my works in progress. So let's take a look at those. So the first thing and what I've been working on probably the, the majority of the week is have a hole and a half. My Christmas socks or festive socks, the first pair for the year, are coming along fantastically. They're they really are they're shorty, sort of shorty socks. They only come a few inches up my leg, which is perfect because that's I like this length of sock just in general. And here is where we were when I showed you last week. I had finished the leg and I had just started on the heel flap on the first sock. So I managed to finish the heel flap and all the way down my big foot. <laughs> so I wear a size 10 or a size 11. So it's, we gotta knit for a little while before we get to the toe on, on my feet. But this is knit with West Yorkshire Spinners Fairy Lights. Not the sparkle, just the regular Fairy Lights. Um, so West Yorkshire Spinners, one of their Christmas yarns from a previous year. I am knitting this on two and a quarter millimeter knitting needle, so 2.25 knitting needle or a US size one. And it's just a basic vanilla-ish sock. I have just did a two by two rib down the leg um, the, the heel flap is just a slip stitch, basic slip stitch heel flap, heel turn, and just a regular gusset. And I continued the two by two, two by two ribbing all the way down until it was time for the toe decreasing. And then we just have a basic, um, basic wedge toe and Kitchener, Kitchener the toe up. So I finished this one up the other day, uh, several days ago. It really did knit up quite quickly because again, it's the leg is very short. The foot took a while just because big feet. 
And I got going on the second. Got going on the second sock, and the the leg is done. Heel flap turn gusset decreases are done, and now I'm starting to head down my size 10 foot, the size 10 foot length. So I've got a little ways to go before I get ready for the the toe on this, but. I made really good, I'm, I'm so happy with the progress I made on this this past week. So I worked on that probably the vast majority of the time since I last talked to you last week up until Thursday. I did take a break, a little bit of a break a few times to do some gauge, gauge swatching for Mystery Shawl, but I'll talk about that in just a couple minutes. So I had really hoped to, yarn balls down. <laughs> I just knocked my yarn off the, the chair beside me. Nah, well, we'll go hunting for it after. <laughs> anyway, I had really hoped to try to have these matching and they're not quite. I think the second sock, my tension, I settled into a different tension. Oh, whatever reason, I don't know. I started at pretty much the same spot, but I was already on to the heel flap at an early, or I was up to the heel flap sooner on the second sock than the first sock. So they're not going to be, they're not going to be identical twins and I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. I tried to get them fairly close I'm really not going to fret about it. The toe will end up being a little bit different color or ending at a little bit different point. Ugh, seriously, these are going on my feet. I don't care. Going on my feet and then tucked into shoes. If anyone's looking that closely at my feet to make sure that my socks are perfectly matching, they're too close to my feet to, to be making those judgment calls on what I'm doing with my with my socks. I, I'm not fussed about that. I'm not that much of a perfectionist. Um, I'm not that type A or that uh, that much of a perfectionist. Close enough. Close enough. And there will be plenty of yarn left to make a second pair of sorta of short, sort of short I gotta quit calling them this because I can't spit that phrase out. There is going to be plenty more yarn to make a second pair of sorta short type. <laughs> sorta shorty socks. I gotta say it real fast, then it comes up. Then it comes out. So there will be plenty more to make a second pair of of, um, of socks, and these are going to go in my Christmas box of socks which is, I don't have the box yet. I'm, I'm on the hunt for a nice box that I want to keep them in. And I only have a few pair that are already in there. So these will add to it. So I really am hoping to get several pair knit up this fall. And I've joined in with Amy Florence from the Stranded Podcast and her hashtag festive... Sock Along 2020, is that what she calls it? Did I get the right name? Festive Sock Along 2020, I think I got the right name. So I've signed up for that, I've joined up for that, and we'll, we'll see how many pair of little socks I can make for my big feet between now and Christmas time. Or when it's the first of December and it's time to start wearing festive Christmassy kind of socks. So I have plenty of yarn that I can use for this and I am hoping to, to crank out several more pair this, this fall. So stay tuned and we'll see, we'll see how far we get along with that. Now the next thing I want to, to talk about is a new cast on that I started on Friday yesterday right yesterday morning I was away from home the majority of the day yesterday so I didn't really get much time to work on this and I've got 
actually very very little to show you you just hang on a second i gotta go scooting underneath the tripod and retrieve my yarn that escaped on me let's try to do this without knocking everything over off kilter how far did i We've got a live band across the street from us now, so if you're hearing some kind of strange music and singing, it's not me. It's, it's outside there. So anyway, I have signed up to do a mystery shawl knit along with a pattern by Stephen West. And this is the Slip Stravaganza socks, or socks. Slip Stravaganza shawl. It's the mystery shawl knit along for the fall. He does these every year and this is the the one for 2020. So I've got my yarn picked out for it and the yarn calls for or the pattern calls for a main color and three contrasting colors and I opted to use a whole super soft for this and my main color is pineapple and my contrast colors are three shades of pinky reds the first one is number one is sugar snap then geranium is the second one and the final one is carmine so contrast one two and three and the um, main color is pineapple. It's a cream color. So the pattern was released, the first clue for the pattern, I should say, was released yesterday morning on the 9th of October. And there will be one clue coming out each Friday for the next over four weeks. So I started this a little bit yesterday finished part of the cast on yesterday and the sm I finished the cast on actually this morning and then did a little bit of knitting on it this morning. So the pattern called for 3.5 millimeter needles. So I did a gauge, gauge swatch on 3.5 millimeter needles and I found that the, the fabric it created was really loosey goosey and it was a little bit, I, I was only getting, instead of getting 24 stitches per four inch, I was only getting about 21 stitches. So I thought that's, it's just, I thought I might be okay with it. I posted some pictures of it and talked about it in one of the threads on Ravelry. And I had some people suggesting that I really should try to go down a needle size or two and see, see how that works. So I took their advice and I appreciate that because I'm so much happier with the fabric when I went down a needle size. So I went down to a 3.25 millimeter needle or a US 3 and I did another gauge swatch and this one I came to about, it came out to roughly 23 stitches over 4 inches and the fabric was so much nicer. I really preferred the fabric using the smaller knitting needles. So I really appreciate the person who suggested I use the smaller needles. I don't know if you're hearing this music in the background. I, I hope not. You might be hearing this. We shall see. So anyway, that's my, or that's where I'm at with that one. So I'll show you what I have done so far and I'm going to put a little spoiler alert note on here and I will put a note up here to tell you what time it's safe to come back in case you're working on the shawl and you want it to remain a mystery for you. If you don't care, keep watching. If you want it to remain a mystery, I will put a little blurb here to let you know when it's safe to come back and, and look again and once I've quit showing what this looks like. So again, it's, I've done almost, I've done such a tiny amount so far that it's, 
the spoiler is probably not going to be much of a spoiler at all. Um, but so I'm showing, I'm going to show it now. So if you don't want to see, please look away and I'll tell you when it's safe to come back. So here's what I have so far. So as I said, it really is, it really is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit done. This is the right side. You start with an I-cord um, uh, cast on, or you, you make a, an I-cord, a long, a long I-cord tail, and then you start working onto the I-cord and then continue on from there. The first clue calls for you using the main color plus colors one and three. So it really wants you to have the high contrast. So my first clue is going to include these three. So it's going to include the pineapple, um, sugar snap, and carmine. The other, the third, or the, the middle contrast color will come in on a later clue. So safe to look back. I've put the, I put what little bit of knitting I have done on this. I put it aside so um, no more spoilers to be seen. But what, what will probably happen each week is because since the clue comes out on a Friday morning and since I probably don't have much time on a Friday to get a lot of knitting done on it before I film my podcast on Saturday, it's quite likely that I'm going to be showing you things a week behind schedule. So, so you can see today I only showed you like a tiny, I've got, basically I've got the, the cast on and two or three rows done. That's it. And um, so when I film next Saturday, I will hopefully by then have completed clue number one and have a tiny start on clue number two. We shall see. So I'm always going to have a lag when I'm showing you some of the, the progress on this shawl and where we are with the, the fast knitters and the people, or the fast knitters and the clues that have already come out. So that. That is my Slip Stravaganza shawl by Stephen West. My last work in progress also ties in with the stash acquisition. And look what I got! I got more yarn. So it looks like it's going to be a pretty decent match in terms of dye lot so I'm hoping that it's okay I'm hoping it'll be okay I was only able to get one one hank of yarn so what the plan is is I also have two little itty bitty two little itty bitty balls of yarn and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, when I get going on the sleeves on this one, I'm going to take one ball of yarn for each sleeve, and I'm going to take this hank of yarn, I'm gonna divide it into two 25 gram balls, and I'm going to do one round of the old yarn, one round of the new yarn. One old, one new, all the way down the sleeve until this little guy is done, and then I'll trans transition to only using the new skein of yarn. And I've got the two balls, so I'll be able to do that with each of the skeins of yarn. So hopefully if it is a noticeable difference between the dye lots when I actually start knitting it up, hopefully it won't be as glaring as if I just started, did the sleeves, just started right away with the new, the new fabric, or the new yarn on the sleeves. So we shall see. I'm not sure when I'm going to have a chance to get back to working on the sleeves after the whole panic of getting um, getting the yarn. Now that I have it, it's just kind of like, ah, we'll relax a bit and not worry about panicking about that now. So now I'm just kind of like, eh, I'll get to the sleeves when I get to the sleeves. 
I think what I am going to do over the next few days is spend a bit more time working on the mystery shawl and then I'm going to get the sleeves cast on and get going on that. So hopefully by next week I'll be able to show you some progress on that. We'll have to wait and see. I'm not sure if I'll actually um, do that or if I'll be excited about trying to get that first pair of get my whole and a half to a finished object. I might work on that. I definitely will be working on the slip stravaganza. So we we shall see what what comes of all of this. Stay tuned for next week and see what what I actually ended up doing. And aside from that, I don't think there's a whole awful lot of other news. I've been keeping up with Vlogtober. I'm not sure if you've checked out on my other channels some of my Vlogtober entries because I do talk a little bit about my knitting on that as well but I talk about a lot of other things as well. So if you're interested in seeing about my experience with doing the swatching for my slip stravaganza feel free to check out the my Vlogtober posts on the, the Karen Burr Designs channel. But otherwise, I think that's about it. This is going to be a little bit shorter video today. I think I'm going to wind it up. The music across the street is getting distracting to me because I feel like I'm competing with the, the guy over there strumming his guitar and singing. So I think I'll close it up for the day and I'll let you go and I will see you next week. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you soon. Bye.